Welcome back. As you can see, the pad is missing. The snare drum's gone. We have no sticks. Uh, today we're going to be talking about our feet and uh, different foot techniques and uh, my approach to playing that I found to be most beneficial. Um, as much as hands, there are many techniques that you, you can use with your feet. Uh, what I'm going to show you is what I found to be the most versatile, the most beneficial to my playing. And I really think at the end of the day, that's all teachers can do is find what we think makes the most sense and what's helped us out uh, so we can help you down the same path. Um, before, we were activating our feet a bit uh, when we were playing. I, I was calling it playing position, where whenever we're even playing on our pad, we are activating our legs by standing on the balls of our feet. Now that we have pedals, it'll start to make more sense in terms of the technique that I use. Um, as you can see, I have a double pedal here. Uh, for the sake of the next few exercises, I'm going to be utilizing the bass drum sound for both feet. Uh, if you do not have a double pedal, uh, fear not, it'd be no problem to do the same exercises with your hi-hat pedal and your bass drum pedal as well. Uh, as you can see, my feet are in the same place that they were when I was playing in playing position with the, the practice pad. Often you'll sit behind someone's drum set and maybe your right foot will be out forward, and the left one's kind of cramped up. I find this one to be the most popular one, is having the left foot really close to you. Um, again, I don't comfortably sit this way, so I don't set up uh, my pedals this way. Uh, the same place I naturally put my feet when I sit down is right where I put the footboard. Um, you want to set up your equipment the way that's conducive to the way we work. When I'm teaching hand technique, we're not trying to contort our fingers in some way to hold onto the stick. We're trying to allow the way our body moves to hold on to it. Uh, it's, it's surprising how difficult some people can have with doing what we naturally do. So yeah, go ahead and you can sit down, uh, sit down on your throne with your, your pedals away from the kit and just take a note where your feet are when you're naturally resting. Perhaps you have a wider spread and perhaps you're a little bit more narrow. This is where I'm comfortable. So once I decide that, then the, then the pedals go underneath. I don't set them up and then find ways to adjust myself around them. Okay, the two biggest techniques are called heel up and heel down. Um, in the most simple terms, heel down is with the heel of your foot on the pedal and the motion comes from your toe. That motion would be just like tapping your foot on the floor. The most general version of heel up would be, again, with the heel off. Now here you're bringing your foot up to the ball of your feet, similar to what we were doing when we were in playing position on the floor. And the motion comes from uh, the entire leg all the way down to the ankle. Again, you can see that there is space underneath my heel when I'm playing. I am an advocate of heel up for a few reasons. Uh, when I put my heel down, I immediately feel my entire leg shut down and I'm not using any of it. I can also feel that my weight shifts forward and I start to lean because now my balance is like a tripod between where I'm seated in my heels and I don't like that. It kind of pulls my chest forward and I feel off balance. Also, in terms of playing, this motion's really coming from the front of my leg exclusively. Uh, and it's a very small muscle group and if you're trying to play for long periods of time or trying to get some force out of your leg, you're going to be exhausted quite quickly. Uh, heel up has the uh, history of being known for a technique that's used to play soft or to play quiet. Uh, you know, if you're feathering the bass drum. But I really don't find it to be good for anything other than that. Um, that's why I recommend heel up. When you bring your heel off, you can feel immediately your weight shifts back to your seat. There is a little bit of a balancing act the first time you do it to be on pedals 
and to feel yourself uh, sitting upright. You know, you might, uh, you'll kind of engage your core a little bit and you'll really feel your shoulder set back, uh, but it'll really be more comfortable uh, down the road. So this heel up approach uh, is really just like the approach that I use with my arm. I mentioned the, the, the gears from the largest gears from the shoulder making large motions down through the elbow and forearm to the wrist and then finally the fingers. Here I can express motions all the way from my hip flexors. In that case, you can see the entire knee move up. That'll allow for a really strong sound, but again, kind of clunky, just like the shoulders. Uh, it's difficult to make this motion really fast. As you move further down, you can use primarily just your calf and your ankle to play as well. Monitoring from the knees is the best way to do this. Um, you can check the motion of it going up and down. You can know then that you're using uh, your upper leg. While if you're playing from your calf and your ankle, then you can see that the knee is almost stationary. 